All right, should, should we go over this thing? Let's start cranking, huh? Wait, what happened to my screen? I thought I saw it coming up. Okay, I'm on. So we got 50 minutes now. Try to get through all these. So I'm going to try to go kind of quick so it can all be on the YouTube. All right, so here we go. So uh, identify. So part one, you know, no graphing calculator. You can use a scientific. So, all right, so how do we do that? Well, that looks like X to the... Um, yeah, is that is that an even power or an odd power? That that's odd power, right? Because the odd powers are like are like x cubed, aren't they? It's not even, so it's not this fourth power thing, and it's not that fourth power thing. It's one of the fifth power ones, isn't it? Good so far. It's got to be either B D or maybe it's none of the above. Okay. Now, what about the fact that the center dot has been moved? Looks like back five, maybe up four. Back five, up four. X is opposite, so back five, that works, but that's the same thing there. Up four, are those the same? Yeah. Are they exactly the same? Yeah. They're exactly the same. I mean, you know, the four is just in the front of the back. That makes no difference. Yeah. Um, I'm totally confused now. Is it, what's the answer? E? E? Why? It looks like B and D are right to me. What am I missing? Uh, am I missing something? It looks like a wrong answer to me. Right? Am I missing something? Anybody see something I'm missing? It looks to me like B and D are right. It looks like a bad question. You guys are the first group I've gone over this with, so it could definitely be a bad question. Right? But I'll move on unless somebody sees something I'm missing. I'm thinking B and D look right. Right, it's not it's not been flipped upside down or anything weird like that. It's going, you know, the, the normal like it's it's normal low to high, left to right. It's the normal. It's not been flipped or anything weird. No, that's hmm. all right. Bad question. I think I think B or D, you know, should be right on that one. So bad question. Let's move on. What's that for the first one? There was a bad question. Yeah, it's the exact same. I don't remember mistakes on the first one. Oh, no, you explained that you said it was because of square root. You have to plug it in and make sure it works. Yeah, I think there was something that was legit. Mm -hmm. So, all right. I'm get, I got these off the... But I did fool around with them. Yeah, sorry. It was my fault, so I should take responsibility. But I made it, did something wrong. All right, let's look at this one. So, um, that looks like the one... Yeah, that's the, the 1 over x graph. Remember the 1 over x, which does the... Uh, the vertical, the, the, the vertical and horizontal crosshairs, I call it, right? And a, no, the normal one has a branch here and a branch there if there's no flips or anything. That's the normal 1 over x graph. Okay, now, this one has clearly been moved. Here's his center dot. Is there a sideways horizontal asymptote? There is. The dotted line is just blending in with the solid line so you can't see it. How do I really know it's there? without seeing it. Well, this is flattening out for some reason, and this is flattening out for some reason. There's a horizontal asymptote there. Does that make sense? You don't Remember, horizontal and vertical asymptotes, they don't have to show those on the graph. Graphing calculator doesn't show them, right? They're not really a part of the graph. That's why they're dotted. They're not really part of the actual graph. They're not points that make the graph true, in other words. They're just a guideline. So they can be there without them showing them to you, do you realize? So there really is that horizontal, and, there, and of course the vertical, they are showing it to us. So anyway, so what does that mean? That's over 1, so x, it's going to be an x minus 1 kind of thing. Well, that didn't help. They all have x minus 1. Okay, well, and then, and so yeah, so that didn't help at all. And then how about the up-down? Have they been moved up or down? No. No, the horizontal is is still, you know, right, it hasn't been moved up or down. So forget about this minus 2 thing and this plus 2 thing. That's not right. That would move it up to or down to. It has not been moved up or down. Everybody with me on that? So it's either B or C, or maybe it's none of the above. So, um, oh, and what's the difference between B and C? Negative. The negative on the 2 or the positive on the 2. Now that's a multiplier. It, maybe it'll help if I write it this way. That's the same, like B, I think is the answer, is the same as negative 2 times 1 over x minus 1. Everybody see that? That minus 2 on the top is the same as a minus 2 multiplying in the front. Do you realize that? 
Anything in the top is the same as in the front. Do you know that about equations? Why? Because that's minus 2 over 1. It would just go right to the top. Same thing. That, that equals minus 2 over x minus 1. It's just another way to say the same thing, isn't it? So when you see that minus 2 up there on B, this is option B, which is the right answer, you should think, oh, that minus 2 on the front, that's a multiplier. Exactly. That's a multiplier. When you multiply by a negative, it flips the graph vertically. That's a Y effector, right? That's a Y flip, isn't it? It's not an X. It's not on the X here. It's a Y flip. So, and that's what's been done. The normal branches are here. They've been flipped to be that way, haven't they? See how this branch... Whoops, I'm erasing it. This branch and this branch, they basically took this graph, and this guy flipped up to here, and this guy flipped down to there. So it's like this, huh? Right? It's been vertically flipped. So that's what that minus 2 does. So the answer is B. It's not C, which has a positive 2. So is that our answer? Good. Okay. Good on that? Move along. Questions? All right. So number 3. So we got that graph there. Um, that's basically an exponential. Remember how exponential graphs work? A times b to the x plus c. There's the general form. You want to put that on your 3 by 5 card. The c, the number added or subtracted off to the right, is the horizontal asymptote, isn't it? So the question is, um, what's the horizontal asymptote? Again, they're not showing it, but you can see where the graph is flattening out. It's at 2, isn't it? So the horizontal is 2. So we have a plus 2. We have a times b to the x plus 2. Good so far on that. Um, so now we're down to c or d, or maybe it's none of the above. c or d, probably. Okay, then what's the other? The normal, the normal horizontal, you know, horizontal at 2, normally it goes up to the right. That's the normal. All of our graphs, unless they're flipped, go up to the right. Let's, I can't think of any that don't, right? All of our normal graphs, unless they're flipped, go up to the right, don't they? Now this one is coming down to the right. So what's been done to him? What kind of a flip was done to him? A sideways flip, because he's been flipped sideways like that, huh? This part went there, and this part went there, huh? See how it's been flipped sideways? That's an X flip. You know what does that? Negative on the X. So which one of these has a plus 2 and a negative on the X. C. Everybody see that? It's not a negative in the front. D has a negative in the front. What would that do? That'd be a vertical flip. That'd flip it down. That's not what we're talking about. This is a sideways flip up 2. So it's C. And that's hopefully the answer. Yes. Good to there. Stop me if you want. Okay, so number 4. So, uh, log graph. Now, what's, again, got to remember the general log. What's the general log? Log base B of X plus C. And this plus C means negative C, because X always opposite, is the vertical. Remember, logs always have vertical. So, at negative C, one unit to the right, going like that, is the general log graph. Good. So you want to have those general equations and pictures on your 3 by 5 card, don't you? Just like back here, you want to have the general exponential equation and general exponential graph on your 3 by 5. Same thing for log here. You want to have the general on your 3 by 5 card. Okay, and then you say, okay, what's this one? Where's his vertical? It's clearly right here. They're not showing it, but you can see where it's taking a dive is at 0. So that means the number in the parentheses, notice it's in the parentheses for log. Back over here for exponential, it's outside the parentheses, right? So anyway, number in the parentheses for log must be zero. We good to there? Because x equals zero is the vertical. So this must be the vertical. Is it zero? So it's just x, in other words. So, and the b, the log, I, I don't know. What, we don't care about that. Um, so... Could it be, could it be A, for example? Um, oh, yeah, it could be, huh? It can't be B, it can't be C. Why? Because they have numbers in the parentheses of the log. We know there's zero in the parentheses with the log. You with me? There's no number other than zero. 
in the parentheses with the log. So it's not B, it's not C. Now, it could be A, because in A, that negative 2 is not in the parentheses. That's outside. That's not in the toaster. Everybody getting that difference? It's a big deal, especially as you move up to calculus, stuff like that. So be clear on that. X is plugged into the toaster. The minus 2 is outside. That's what it means to not be in the parentheses. That's maybe. Yeah, that could be. And, and how about D? Yeah, maybe. No, for another reason, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, what's wrong with D? D's got a negative multiplying the front of the log, which if you did that, it would flip, it would flip the log vertically. If you put a negative in front of the log like that, it would flip it upside down, wouldn't it? That's not what we have. We have it going low to high. It's not been flipped. It's in the normal state of low to high. So it's not D. Could it be A? Yeah. And what does that minus 2 mean? Down to. That's a vertical. That's not in X's world. It's not in the parentheses. It's outside of X. It's a Y effect. It's down to. And sure enough, that's right. Normally, the, the dot's right here. It's been moved down to. It's like that. It looks like it's been moved down to right there. Yep, that's exactly where that dot is. It's got to be It's got to be A. I'm hoping that's the answer. Yes, 4 is A. Good on that? Questions? Okay, so on this one, you want to make those bases the same. Remember when we have powers? You, let, let me write out a power. You want to have X in power. You want to have a whole game plan, have it on your three, you know, but it's a bunch of recipes, isn't it? A lot of math is recipe, you know, steps to follow to make the meal, right? Steps to follow to solve the problem. You want to have recipe after recipe after recipe on your three by five card. X in the power zone. That's, and that's the identification. That's a lot of the game in math and science classes is identification. When you get that exam on Thursday, you want to look at that and go, oh, that's X in the power zone. That's the unique mark of this kind of problem. Well, like three of them or something. X in the power zone, what do you do? Number one, you try to make, I should say make, try to make the bases the same. You try to make the bases the same. If you cannot, and sometimes you cannot, then, um, then if you cannot, then get the base alone and L in both sides and bring power down to the front. Remember that? So you try to make the bases the same. If you can't, you do the L in thing. So let's see that. Can I make a one third and a nine? Can I make those two bases the very same number? Yeah, I can make them both three, can't I? Well, how do you make one-third out of a three? Remember fractions? What does that mean? Three to the negative one. Remember, that's one-third. Remember, big, big important theme of this exam will be your knowledge that negative powers flip things. Negative powers flip things. They don't make it negative in the front. They flip it, don't they? So three to the negative one, that's one-third. Five X plus six equals, and what about the other side? Nine is three squared. Now, I'm putting parentheses around these. Because that helps me do what's correct. What do I mean? Now that minus 1 needs to multiply, multiply, doesn't it? Remember, powers outside parentheses and powers inside parentheses multiply. So that will become 3 to the minus 5x minus 6. And this 2, likewise, will multiply 2x minus 4. Is everybody okay with that? So that's powers to powers. And then you just cut out the bases. You don't need them anymore, right? If 3 to something is 3 to something, those somethings must be equal. So minus 5x minus 6 equals 2x minus 4. Solve for x. How do you solve? x is on both sides, you know. Get rid of one of them. Just get rid of the 2x or either one. doesn't matter. And um, what's that? Minus. This is going to be none of the above, isn't it? I remember now. So a couple of you came up on this one, so I remember none of the above. Plus 6. And um, it's going to be minus 7x is 2. Divide by minus 7. Minus 2, 7. It's not there. None of the above which is always a little disturbing. Sorry, I'm not trying to disturb you, but some of them are, none of the above. Good? Questions on that one? All right, I'll... All right so uh, X in power. So again, identification. X has climbed into power, right? Climbed into the power zone. What do you try to do? Make the bases the same. So you should take your calculator right away and take uh, 4. You have a scientific calculator at this point, right? Take 4 and just try going 4 times 4 times 4. And right away, it'll get too big. 
And you go, oh, well, how do I do 32? It skipped, a, two of them made 16. I did another one, it was 64. It skipped over 32. Right, so four's not going to work, but what will work? Two. Go for two. Yeah, you can make them both out of two. So you say, oh, yeah, four is two squared. Again, I'm doing the parentheses. And uh, 32 is, you should calculate it, two to the fifth. So it always means, it always means, uh, because 4 is 2 squared, to the x minus 1. So now distribute that. So it's 2x minus 2. Multiply that. And that's 15x. And then cut out the bases. Powers are equal. Solve for x. Subtract 2x. So minus 2 is 13x. Divide by 13. Minus 2, 13. So there it is. Good on that one? Yep. All right, so we'll go on to number seven. Seven, X is in the power zone again. Okay, so again, X is in power. Now, what do we do when X is in power? We try to make the bases the same. No way here. E and four. No way we're going to make the bases the same. So what do we do when, we can't, when X has climbed into power and we can't make the bases the same? L in both sides. Everybody good with that? So write that on your three by five card. L in both sides. So I'm going to just sneak an L in here and an L in there. Both sides. And what does that do? It dethrones the power, right? Didn't I tell stories about Stalin and Hitler and all this yeah. to help you remember? I'm trying to do what I can to help you remember. It's a spe very special thing to be able to t dethrone something, take it out of power. That's a very special thing that the, that's the best thing logs do. That's why we, that's the main reason we still have logs. We use them a lot because they do that. Nothing else does that. So real special characteristic. Remember it. When X is in power, what brings it out of power is natural log. So then that X plus 2 comes down to the front like that. That's just L and V is just 1. So that's just X plus 2. Don't, don't really need those parentheses, really. Get to there. Just subtract the 2. X is L. And now you can't, you have to leave it like that. You can't go 4 minus 2 is 2 because, again, he's outside the toaster. He's in the toaster. Two different worlds, right? So just leave it like that. And there it is. We're in that's D. Good? Questions on that one? On to number eight. So there it is. Three problems. X and power. How okay. So, uh, all right. So log base six. That The test generator I use from the publisher, it doesn't, it doesn't make bases go very low, and it doesn't make powers go very high. You have to look close. That, that is a lowered down six, sort of, right? That is the base, it, you know, so I want you to see. That's a part of what you practice them, so you'll see ahead of time what it'll look like, and you won't be thrown off Thursday. That's how they do their bases, you know. Feel free, come up and ask me if you're not sure during the test, but, but I think you'll know now that you've seen it. That is a base. Okay, so what do we do with logs? How do, what's the game plan for solving logs? Yeah, solving logs, it's the whole, well, really, I should say number one get the log alone, and that'll be an issue on number 9 in a minute. You'll have to first subtract the 6 and divide by the 4 to get the log alone before you do the special step. So step 1, get the log. It's not an issue here. The log already is alone. But step 1, get the log alone. Step 2, lose the log. Cross it off. Base stays the base. Other 2 switch, right? Other 2 switch. That's the whole thing. Okay, so this one, the base, the log already is alone. There's not, there's not, there's not like a three in front of it or anything. It logs already alone. So just lose the log. Base stays the base. Six stays the base. Other two switches. These guys switch. Instead of six to the x squared minus five x seven, six to the one. He's still a base. He's still low down, having something on him. And the x squared minus five x goes over there. Good. So far, we lost the log. The log is gone. When you lose the log, base stays the base. Other two switch. Good so far? Now, 6 to the 1 is just 6. Okay, now what do we... Okay, okay great. We don't have a log anymore. We're, we're making headway. But what do I do with that? Well, that's a whole nother recipe. I hope you know it very clearly. Whenever you have x squared with an equal sign, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? Get a 0. You need to know that immediately. Not factor. A lot, I've seen a lot of... I've worked with a lot of students the last couple of days on this drill. They'll start by factoring. No, no, no. Now, we'll factor in a minute, in a minute. But first, we've got to get a zero. So you, you want to know that. You want to write this on your 3 by 5 card. Get a zero, then factor with the parentheses, right? So when you see x squared, you just need to know that cold. Somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, x squared, 
You get a zero. You just get rod get a zero. So as soon as x squared rears its ugly head, the sea monster, I try to make all these analogies to help you. X squared, just there it is. So so jump this six to the other side. You can bring it over here. And we have zero is x squared minus five x minus I just really subtracted six, right, from both sides. So now we have a zero. Now we factor. What is that going to be? Minus six plus one? Yeah, and then you know the answer is right, just opposite, opposite, so plus 6, minus 1. Uh, there it is, A. Good on that, remember that? So when you see x squared, get a 0. Get a 0. Good, questions on that? On to number 9. Okay, so 6 plus 4, natural log x equals 4. Yeah, so what's the first step? I like I just wrote a minute ago, get the log alone. So before we do any crossing out the log base is base stuff, we got to get that log alone. You don't do that lose the log thing until you first get him alone. So let's do that. Subtract 6 from both sides. That's gone. And that will be negative 2. And then divide by the 4. And then that's negative. Just reduce it, right? Negative a half. Let's reduce that fraction, negative half. Now, the log's alone. So, so step one, ln alone. <laughs> get the L. All right, good. So step one, all of this is step one, get the log alone. Now, step two, lose the log, huh? Lose that log. Cross it off. And what happens when you, step two, lose the ln or any other kind of log? Base stays the base. The other two switch. Who's the base? Remember, he has E as the base. So put them in there. The base stays the base. The other two. So instead of e to the x, it's e to the minus half. X goes over there. There's our answer. E to the minus half. Good. So step one, get the log alone. Step two, lose that log. Base stays the base. The other two switch. Go on to part two. All right. So 10, 11, they want the horizontal aspect. So I wrote on the board. Let me write it out right here just so it's on the YouTube as well for horizontal. So for horizontal asymptotes, you've got to let n equal highest numerator power d equal highest denominator power. So, and then, so it's two here, it's four there. And then I have a series of steps. If the denominator is bigger, then the horizontal is y equals zero. If the, if they're equal powers, then the horizontal is y is a over b, where these are the numbers in the front of highest power terms. Step three, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator by only one, by only one, get that out of the way, then it's oblique. That's the oblique case, and you've got to divide the denominator into the numerator and the equation will be right there. Um, and then step four, if the denominator, a numerator is bigger than the denominator by only one, by two or more, if it's way bigger, then there's no horizontal asymptote. No, no oblique either. There's no, none. So there we go. So here we go. So on number 10, we specifically have numerator is two, denominator is four. That means case one, denominator is bigger, so it's y equals zero. y equals zero isn't there, so it's none of the above. So the answer should be y equals zero on number 10. It's not there, so it's none of the above. Right? It says y equals zero is the answer when the denominator is bigger. The denominator is bigger, should be y equals zero. It's not there, none of the above. Good. Number 11. So these are quick if you have this table. Number 11, 2 power, 2 power. So the numerator is 2, denominator is 2, they're equal. They're equal. What's equal mean? A over B. What? So it's A over B. What's the A and the B? It's the number in front, the number in front. 6 over 4, reduce it, 3 over 2, there it is. 3 over 2. Good with all that? That has, yeah, see, I, I sort of don't like to do math that way. Let me just, I mean, that's just like, memorization. But um, but why? Why? Why is why is that all true? It's because remember what a horizontal asymptote is, is you go off to, to the right forever. 
right? So we're, we're asking, whenever we ask, what is a horizontal asymptote? We're saying, if I was to make a graph, and I go way over to the right, like to 10, 100, 1,000, a million, a billion, what's the graph going to do? Is it going to like, is it going to level off eventually? Or is it going to rock it up? I mean, what's it going to do? Well, if you're plugging in really, really, really big numbers way off to the right, these are concepts you'll need for calculus. So, so let's track with me, even though you're like, I, I got it, I can do it. But track, grab these concepts, because this is what you need to think on in calculus. You think about as you plug in numbers way up to the right, like 10, 100,000, a million, a billion, all that matters is the most powerful term on the top and the bottom. Do you realize that? Everything else is just chump change, as they say. It's small potatoes. It's nothing, right? X to the fourth will dominate over 30. Even though this guy, yeah, 36 is bigger than, he's got no number, whatever. He's X to the fourth. You plug 1,000 into him, he's 1,000 times 1,000. Of four times. That's going to be way more than just 36 times 1,000, you realize. Right? Same thing on the top. So, um, so it's always the most, that's why all we care about is the most powerful term. When you go way off to the right. That's the whole deal. With the horizontal, you're talking about going forever to the right. And what happens in the end. It's in behavior, really. So all that matters is the most powerful term in the top, most powerful term in the bottom. Same thing here. And then they sort of have a tug of war, don't they? And if the bottom wins which he does on number 10, the bottom is more powerful. He's going to pull that graph down, right? He's more powerful, which means he's going to flatten the graph to be y is zero. That's what he's going to do. When they tie, well, it's just like they cancel, basically. 6x squared over squared. The x squared are going to cancel. You plug 1,000 squared over 1,000 squared, they, they cancel. They're equal. And it's just 6 over 4. It's just 3 halves. And on you go. I don't got time for any more. I better move on. But that's the logic why this table is true. So verticals are denominator equal to zero, huh? That's where you get a vertical. So grab the denominator. X squared plus 49X is zero. Factor out an X. Right? So if two things are multiplying to be zero, either one could be two times into be zero. Either one could be zero to make them times and be zero. So x alone could be zero, or this part could be zero, which means jump it over, negative, four, negative 49 and zero. There it is. Good on that? One of these. Kind. Okay. So you got to set up the river. you got the three sides like that. Okay. couple careful things on the words here. They say... X is the length of the side perpendicular to the river. That means this side and this side. They, they hit the river perpendicular, don't they? So this length is X, and this is obviously the same, so it's also X. Well, then what do you do for the other side? Call it Y, because it's different. You've got to use a different letter, because it's can't use X there also, because if you use the same letter, you'd be saying it's the same length. It's not. Y is different. So just use a different letter. Good there so far. It's important that you do call X the top bottom because they specifically said X is the one's perpendicular. Okay. Now, what if, now that's, that's the lengths. Now let's bring in the cost. What's the cost of this piece? Well, it says the, um, what does it say? It's uh, the fencing. Uh, the, the parallel to the river is $4 a linear foot. So that's this one. This is parallel to the river. So that's 4y, because it's y feet, $4 per foot. So 4y. The cost of this, it's $7 per linear foot for the other two sides, 7x, 7x, right? Because it's x feet, $7 per foot. Okay, so what's the total cost function then? It's going to be $80 first off for the four posts, right? Four posts, 20 bucks each, 80, plus 7x plus 7x plus 4y. So far, so good. Just the $80 for the four posts, 4 times 20, and then top, bottom, and right. 7x, 7x, 4y. Now, that's, and that simplifies 80 plus 14x plus 4y, but we can't leave y. See all the equations just have x? So what do we do to get rid of that y? That's how these always work. We have a second equation, don't we? We always have a second equation that we substitute into this main cost equation. What's the second equation? It's about the 2,000. The only fact we haven't used yet, right? The 2,000. What does that say? The area is 2,000. 
So what's the area, space in the middle of a rectangle? Length times width, isn't it? So area is length times width. Let me get this out of the way. This is y here. So what's the length? The area is 2,000. And what's the length and the width? x and y, isn't it? So therefore, I can solve that for y and plug in. How do you solve for y? Divide by x. So y is 2,000 over x. Put that in right there. So running out of room here, what do we get? 80 plus 14x plus 4 times y, which is 2,000 over x. Can you see, see that down there? So it's 80, so it's 80, 14x, and then 4y is 4 times 2,000 over x, which is, remember that 4 goes to 4 over 1, so it goes to the top, 8,000 over x. So is there like an 8,000 over x? Oh, is that none of the above after all that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. None of the above. It's kind of disturbing. All right. Okay with that one? Questions? All right. All the battles recognition. How are you going to know that? What key word in number 14 tells you it's a type it into your calculator? Yeah, somewhere it says highest. Highest, lowest, what does that mean? Max. Max, so you just type in y1 equals, remember you got to put parentheses around it, 12x plus 4 divided by 3x squared plus 2. Type it in, and then do the second, however you have a TI or Cassie or whatever, on the, on the TI it would be second calc max, you know, the left, left of it, enter, go right of it, enter, that whole thing we've done before. And on, in the guess, enter. And you'll find T is point light. It's like 548 or something, so it rounds to 55, five, which is C. So come see me if you have any trouble with that. I'd be glad to help you with the calculator. So there it is. That's just, and how you recognize that? Highest or lowest? There'll be one on the test Thursday. It says find the highest, find the lowest, and there's really nothing else. You go, oh, that's the calculator one. I think it'll even say use your graph. It does. I remember it. It says use your graphing calculator, so that'll be obvious. Let's go on. Okay, you don't have to do anything with one-to-one. -one. It's just saying it is one-to-one. -one. Don't worry about it. That just means it's invertible, whatever. Find the inverse. That's all we care about. So this is y equals 3 over 5x minus 2. Now, what do you always do to find it? What's the game plan for finding an inverse function? Number one, you invert or switch x and y. Two, you solve for y. So that's it. So let's trade x and y. You invert x and y, so this will become x equals 2. This one's none of the above again, isn't it? If I remember right, 3, or, three over 5y minus 2. I just switched to x and y. Everything else stays put, just x and y trade roles, inverse function, invert x and y. Now I need to solve that for y, right? Step 1, invert x and y. Step 2, now solve for y. Well, you can put this over 1 and just cross multiply. Right? Diagonal. When you have equals in the middle, you diagonal. Everybody clear with that? When you have times in the middle, that's when you cross cancel. Remember that from algebra? If you have times, two fractions times multiplied, that's when we cross cancel. If you have two fractions equal, that's when you cross multiply. So x times 5y minus 2 is 1 times 3. So that's x. Well, then let's distribute. Boom, boom. 5xy minus 2x, 1 times 3 is just 3. Add the 2x. Trying to get y alone, right? 3 plus 2x, divide by 5x. Boom, boom, y is alone. There it is. It's none of the above. Right? Yeah. Doesn't quite work with any of those. Good? Questions on that one? Was that 15 of the above? Yep. All right, onward. Yeah, I got to get to those last two, don't I? 24, 25, especially. All right, same thing. Switch X and Y. This is Y. Switch them. So step one, invert. Invert. Oh, by the way, if you're looking at this one and you're like, well, what am I even supposed to do? Remember, you always look back to the last instructions. I think there's no instructions above this, right? At least right above it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at it, 16, it just says... There's a function, there's some answer. Oh, you know, it says inverse though, huh? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Anyway, invert x and y. So x is out here, y is over here. 
You make both the x's into y's and the y into x. First step. Now what? Solve. Solve for y. What am I going to do? Same thing. Cross multiply. Put this over 1. Diagonal, diagonal. x times minus 9y minus 6 is 1 times minus 8y plus 6. Distribute. Minus 9xy minus 6x. Distribute. Minus 8y plus 6. Okay, what are we supposed to do? Solve for y. Now, here's the trick. It's in two locations. Want to have a recipe. Step. One, two, three, on your three by five card for the test on Thursday on what you do when the letter's in two places. So I don't know if I have room to write it somewhere here. Maybe down here. Let, so what do you do when the letter's in two places? What's the game plan? You've got to get them on the same side. I mean, that might be enough right there if you just remember that. Get them on the same side. And then step two is factor out and divide. That's the game plan. So when you look at this guy and this guy, you say, i got to get those two on the same side. doesn't matter which side, both on the left, both on the right, whatever. Just get them on the same side and everything else on the other side. So like maybe I'll just jump this guy this way and then this guy that way. So then I'll have minus 9xy. Remember when things jump, they switch signs. Plus 8y. And this will now be plus 6x plus 6. See how I've got the two y terms on the same side now? And the other stuff on the other side? So there's for sure one of these on the exam Thursday where the letter's in two places. It's really important for calculus. You have a bunch of these in calculus where you'll have like a bunch of terms and a couple of them will have what you're trying to solve. You need to know how to do this. Get those on the same side. Push everything else to the other side. Factor out the Y like that and divide. So divide by the minus 9x plus 8. Minus, minus, boom, boom. There it is, y is alone. Now, does any of these work? Are any of these right? Um, well, yeah, A. Yeah, there it is, A. First one. Right out of the chute. Is that good? So it's A. Now, let me, let me redo this and show you how you might get an answer that looks different, but it's the same. So I know you maybe didn't copy it down, but it's all right. It'll be on YouTube. And let me show you the other way. Because I said you could go left or right, huh? So what if you said, well, I just I moved the y terms over here, and I moved this guy back there. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to end up with the negative of the answer, top and bottom, which means it's the same thing. Let me show you. So if you go this way, you'll get minus 6x minus 6. You'll get minus 8y plus 9xy. Now I put both the y terms on the right side, which is fine. Factor out the y, minus 8 plus 9x. Right, and then last step, divide. Divide by minus 8 plus 9x, minus 8 plus 9 Boom, y is alone. Would you recognize that's still the same as a? Think, well, no, it's minus minus, and that's plus plus, and the bottom looks different too. It's the top and the bottom. All the signs are reversed, which means it's the same, which means, in other words, if all the signs are opposite, top and bottom of a fraction, that's the same answer because you could just multiply top and bottom by minus 1 and you would turn it into the other one, which doesn't change anything when you do the same thing to the top and the bottom, right? Boom, boom, plus, plus, boom, boom, be plus 8 minus 9x, plus 8 minus 9x, same. So would you recognize that? Do you know that true fact from algebra? So make sure you know that's the same thing. So I don't want you to be fooled. I really don't. I want you to know that truth. Is that good? Mm -hmm. So all the signs, but, but, yeah, all the signs have to be different, though. Can't be like all but one of them. That, that would be different. All, every sign is the opposite. So that's the same thing, really. Top and bottom by minus one. All right. 17, got a log. That one, so this one-third is the base. Looks a little funny. Okay, so how do we, how do we solve a log... Well, you've got you to put an x over here. Remember, you just go equals x. You have a recipe for that. You just go equals x. Lose the log. So what we always do for logs. So I lose the log. What happens? Base stays the base. Other two switch. Instead of one-third to the 81, it's one-third to the x. 81 goes over there. Good so far. Now, how do we solve from there? Well, uh, remember, x is in power. Remember, we had a recipe for x is in power. One, try... The make, the bases, the same. Remember that? When x is in power, try to make the bases the same. Stalin's climbed into power, so try to make the bases the same. You can do that. This is 3 to the minus 1. 
81 is 3 to the 4th. 9 times 9, 2 3s, 2 3s, 3 to the 4th. And so that means 3 to the minus x is 3 to the 4th. Cut out the bases. Minus x is 4 divided by minus 1. x is minus 4. Like that. Or you can just do it in your calculator. Remember what I taught you about how to do the calculator? Remember, remember what I said when you have, you can just say, look, I'm, just, I'm not going to do any x or any of that. I'm just going to go, remember how you can turn it into two logs? Log 81 over log 1 third. Remember that? Just hit the buttons on your calculator. Remember when the base is anything other than 10, the high goes high. The high goes on the top. The low goes on the bottom. What do you mean high? The 81's higher up than the 1 third. Because people always used to reverse the order, and, I remember, in days past, so I started making that little saying up. So the, so the 81's higher up, right? The 81's higher, the 1 third's lower. So put the lower one on the bottom, the higher one on the top. The high goes high, the low goes low. Make it two logs. Remember how you can always just make it two logs on the calculator? And just hit the buttons. Log, try it right now if you want. Log 81 divided by log 1 third. Boom. Negative 4. That'll work also. All right. Let's keep going. I've got to get to that last one. All right. 18. So, yeah, basically, F G negative 1 means F of negative 1 times G of negative 1. It doesn't mean composition. Now, on the real exam, I just don't remember... Um, which is good. So we have, you have to learn both. That's what I want. You learn it all. Um, I don't remember if I put a composition one. I could have put F of. That's what we did a lot. That's what we spent more time on in the homework, huh? Was ones like that. That would be a different kind of problem, right? That would mean G, negative 1 into G, and then the answer into F is what that would mean. We did a couple of those in the homework, didn't we? Remember that? That's composition. Or, or that's the same thing as, you know, this. This is that means negative x, x into g, the y value coming out of g into, a, into f, like that. Anyway, so this one means put the x of negative 1 into g and give me the y value. Because the answer is the y value. Remember how a toaster works. You plug in x, you get out y. You plug in negative 1, you get out y. Well, how do you do that? Here's the g function. Put in negative 1. What do I mean? Put in, find x negative. Tell me what dot has on the g graph, what dot on the g graph has an x value of negative 1? This one right here. That's back 1, I can't tell, what is that? Back 1, down 2. That's the x, y, the input, output for the g graph. Put in negative 1, get out, answer negative 2. Times, now what about the f graph? Put in negative 1 to the f graph, where's that? That looks like right here, right? That, that's the point on the F graph, negative 1, up 1, X, Y. Put in negative 1, get out, positive 1. Good. Remember on a graph? And you multiply those together, negative 2. Good on that. The other. So this is um, F of G. So that means G into F, doesn't it? Take all of G... Put it right there into f. 7 over 4 over 3x minus 5. So I just took all of g and f. Functions are always right in the left, aren't they? So now, what do you do to clean that up? Because you can't leave it that way. None of the answers look like that. What do you do? You focus on the denominator, 3x, and you multiply everybody, top and bottom, by that. Cancels it out here, and you get 21x over 4 minus 15x. Uh, B. There it is. 20. Remember the table stuff? Man, I'm not going to make it here, huh? Remember the table stuff? You're supposed to look at these numbers. What is this? Add 3. Nope, that's not adding 3. Times 2. It's times 2, isn't it? So it's times 2, times 2, etc. So that means it's y equals a times b to the x plus c. And the b, the base, is what you're multiplying by every time. The A in the front is what's next to zero, right? Remember that? The A is whatever's next to zero. That's the A value. The B value is what you're multiplying by. We don't have any C. The C is just zero. It's 12 times 2 to the X. It's D. You can check it with a table as well. Just make your own table. See if this is really right. That's the best thing. Do you know what I mean? Make your own little XY table. Say, is it really 12 times 2 to the X? Let me put in a zero and C. 12 times 2 to the 0, yeah, that's 12. Put in a 1, you know, on you go. You know it's right. 
Right, that was D on 20. Yep. I just think, why do I spend three hours lecturing on how to solve greater than, less than, and nobody gets it? It's one of my discouraging points. So I'd like to remedy that. So, all right, 24 is a little hard. 25 is really hard. We've got like three minutes. All right, 24. So, greater, so how are you going to read identification first off? Greater than, less than. Whole special game plan. Totally different from equals when you got greater than, less than. You got to recognize that. It's got to jump off the page for you. Greater than, less than. That's how we do math science. Recognition. You've got to identify the different kinds of problems. Greater than, less than. What do you do for greater than? What do you do for greater than, less than? Um, non fraction. Well, you look back to the YouTubes and stuff. I gave you a whole. Basically, I said factor. I don't remember how I wrote it out. And then you got to graph it. You've got to graph it. You've got to find the end behavior. Remember the whole end behavior thing and then the bounce, pass through thing? You've got to do all that. So what am I talking about? Factor, take out the x. x squared minus 4x minus 45. And then factor the rest. Minus 9 plus 5. Right? Because that multiplies to be 45, adds to be minus 4. Remember, sign in the middle goes on the bigger always. Right? And then you've got to find the zeros. What are the, that's how you graph. It's with the zeros. What are the zeros? Well, what makes this part zero? Zero. What makes this part zero? Nine. What makes this part zero? Negative five. So then you go to the graph and you say, okay, at zero, at negative five, and at positive nine, the graph is going to hit zero. That's what that means. Okay, now we have to figure out the end behavior. Like in the end... Way off to the right, is it going to go up or is it going to go down? What determines end behavior? End is most powerful term uh, multiplied out. Multiplied out. Not factored, in other words. Are you, are you comfortable? Have you spent enough time working with these that you know the difference between the factored version and what information you can get out of that? That's the factored version versus the original version and what that talks to you about. The original is the multiplied out, not factored version. And that shows you the most powerful term is x cubed, positive x cubed. Remember, he dominates. You plug in a thousand, a million, and a billion, nobody else can compare to what x cubed will, will, will have to say on that day. So x cubed is the most powerful, positive. So it's going up. If it was negative x cubed, it'd be going down. All right, so it's up. Now, how do we know whether it passes through or bounces? First power, first power, first power. That's the factored version, which tells you that information. Odd powers are pass-throughs. Remember, even powers bounce? Remember that whole thing? So it's going to pass through, pass through, pass through. Okay, so what does all that tell me now? Greater than zero? Positive. They want to know where's that graph positive. Where's it greater than zero? Right here, right here. So that means between minus 5 and 0 and 9 to infinity. A, minus 5 to 0, 9 to infinity. Let me just do a couple steps on 25. I've got to. It's so important. I've been wanting to get to 25. Let me just get you rolling on 25. Because what I see on 25 is people go wrong, like 80% of the class goes wrong on step number one. And then the ball game is over. The rest is garbage and a waste of their time. So let's don't do that. Let me show you the steps. For this, it's in the notes, it's on the YouTube, it's been carefully explained, it's there if you will give it the time, so um, you can look back, so for the fraction, for the greater than, less than fraction one, remember the first step is get a zero, get a zero, it's not multiply by those denominators, that's what everybody does, that's what 80% of the class does. You can't do that. Remember, I did a whole spiel to explain that you can never multiply by anything with an X because you don't know if it's positive or negative. You don't know whether to turn the symbol or not. That's why it's fully illegal to multiply both sides by the common denominator when you have a greater than, less than. No. Equals? Great. Yeah, do it. If that was equals. Greater than, less than? Whole different story. Can't multiply by those denominators because you don't know whether X is positive or negative. You don't know whether to turn the symbol or not. Can't do it. So instead, you got a whole other game plan. Bring that over like that. Becomes negative. Get a zero. Remember that? And then make them one fraction. So you got to make them one fraction. How do you do that? Common denominator. 
top and bottom by x minus 1 here, top and bottom by x minus 6 there. So distribute this, get 14x minus 14. This is a minus 12. Careful, care that minus, everybody forgets about that minus. This will not come to the casual. It will come to those who do the homework a couple of times and practice it. Negative on the 12. That's the number one most common algebra mistake is forgetting a negative buried in the middle of two fractions. Remember, that negative is on that 12 wherever he will go. It's his baby. Minus 12x plus, there's the mistake. A lot of people have negative 7, plus 72, because negative times negative, right? Over the common denominator x minus 1, x minus 6, greater than 0. Gather like terms. 14x minus 12x is 2x. Minus 14 plus 72 is that um, 60, 58 over x minus 1, x minus 6, greater than 0. Factor that top, x plus 29 over x minus 1, x minus 6, greater than 0. Now, you find the things, now go to the, um, let me erase this. Now go to the graph, super quick, and, and when we go to the graph, remember that on the graph, whatever makes de denominator 0, positive 1, positive 6, those are what? Verticals, aren't they? Positive 1 is going to be a vertical. Positive 6 is going to be a vertical. Remember, whatever makes the denominator 0 is a vertical. What makes the top 0, negative 29, x is negative 29, is way over here, is just a 0. And then you have to make a table and test each region. Remember, these are painful. Right? You've got to make a table. You've got to plug in something like 7, something like 2, something like 0. Right, something like negative 30, something in each region to find out if it's positive, negative. I think it's like, oh, I think it's like this. Whoops, like, like this. I think this is the way the graph goes. Eventually, when you when you do it, you'll find that. Then, okay, where's it greater than zero? Here and here. It's greater and greater. And there it is. So you got to do all that. You, I, found the, I found these U-shapes and above, below by plugging into this thing or the original X values in those zones. Be glad to talk more with you in my office about that. There it is, guys.